Hello everyone and welcome to the episode 24 of the Mobile Networks Overview course. Uh, I think it would be the start of a new fantastic journey since IMS IP Multimedia Subsystem is right now widely used around the world and it has lots of uh, uh, interesting applications. Uh, I will dedicate some episodes uh, to this uh, topic about history, about uh, motivations and uh, uh, network architecture and also some basic uh, signaling scenarios and after that uh, I will go through uh, 5G and 5G core network as I promised to you before. And so uh, what is the history of IMS and uh, uh, what was the motivation and uh, its applications? Uh, IMS is not a new topic as I told you before in the previous episodes, uh, the origination is uh, from uh, 2002 and 2003, uh, uh, more than 20 years ago. Uh, let's uh, have a review about the uh, mobile network's architecture release. The first uh, architecture was R99 here. Uh, there was just a core network and control plane and user plane was not separated there was a, they separated in R4 in R4 release 4 uh, CP control plane and user plane separated from each other and, uh, and then we had MSC server and media gateway uh, as you know and these two elements had uh, some signaling protocol like H248 for communication. Uh, then in 2002 and 2003, uh, 3GP released uh, release 5. Uh, in Core Network, IMS was introduced. Uh, one of the uh, most famous applications of uh, applications of IMS is voice over LTE or Volte and also one uh, one other is Vilte video over LTE and also many other applications like instant messaging uh, and uh, third party cap uh, third party applications and many other uh, applications but uh, to the best of my knowledge right now this uh, vault uh, uh, has the uh, most uh, used application in IMS. Uh, and the reason that uh, vault is popular is that um, before IMS, uh, if we don't have IMS and we, uh, in, in an ordinary network, uh, if you are using data service, uh, when you want to get a call or use a CS service like SMS, USSD, no, no, not SMS, USSD or call, the CS fallback scenario will happen. So you will, uh, you will go from, a, for example, 4G LTE from a generation to a, a lower generation, for example, 3G or 2G. And this is CS fallback. We will fall back from LTE to CS. But when you have uh, IMS and your Volta service is enabled, uh, so uh, CS fallback will not happen and you are always online and this is one of the good uh, advantage of uh, IMS service which is Volta and also another benefit of this is the high, high definition crystal voice uh, which is due to the uh, used codecs, uh, codecs that are uh, used uh, that are optimized for a better, uh, more quality voice like AMR wideband, adaptive multi-rate wideband. Uh, also other codecs can be used but uh, I know this uh, in some operators I, I see this is used. Uh, so uh, IMS is not new and the history uh, goes to 2002, about 20 years ago, and uh, I also talked about some of its application. And uh, but why? Uh, but why uh, this is uh, widely used 
uh, recent in the recent years and right uh, right now because uh, in this uh, in these years in that time uh, LT network and some other infrastructure was not uh, developed uh, developed like what we have right now and uh, these uh, applications like Volta, Vilta and some other things uh, need, uh, needed a good infrastructure so I think the uh, maturity of IMS uh, started uh, from from the date that LTE network become popular and uh, had, a, had a good grow, growth in the world uh, so, uh, what are the motivations for, emer uh, for emerging IMS? Uh, as you can see here, uh, before we had uh, many vertical networks, for example, fixed network, internet, mobile networks, all of these networks has uh, different costs, uh, various costs, uh, Overlap in hardware service and database, a separate user and service, and uh, the, so the capex, capital expense, and opex, operational expense was very high. But one of the motivations in IMS is that these uh, these costs uh, can be unified and uh, definitely they will be they will decrease be decreased, and uh, we will have a uh, have a high amount of de uh, decrement in the costs uh, because uh, we will have a one unified one unified core which is IMS now right now I uh, as I know uh, many mobile network operators are trying to uh, are trying to also migrate CS network and remove the CS network and merge it merge all of them to the IMS network uh, one of the m uh, most important uh, aspects of the IMS is also that it is access independent. Uh, in IMS core, it is not mandatory that it is uh, used for uh, it apply for just for mobile networks. It's not like this. You can uh, use IMS uh, for a fixed network or ADSL, XDSL, uh, and so on. So one of the most important aspects of the IMS is that it is access independent and it is not just dedicated to the mobile networks, okay? Uh, and because of this, uh, we can have a convergence here. And this convergence uh, have, uh, has lots of uh, benefits and advantages like uh, reducing the costs uh, very uh, very much and also uh, reducing capex opex and also making the maintenance and uh, troubleshooting very better and easier and more reliable uh, this is um, from 3gpp uh, ims network architecture and topology in one look you can see this is at the first look it is it seems very complicated but it is not uh, so complicated and uh, don't afraid uh, of these many interfaces and many in these uh, various names it will be easy for you after uh, going through some uh, details and introductory uh, contents okay but the be uh, the better uh, uh, presentation of IMS network the hierarchical architecture is like this uh, I think this is uh, this uh, topology uh, I think shows the IMS network very better which uh, uh, also uh, comes from uh, one of the prestigious vendors telecom vendors uh, here we can see we have a better control and access as you can see, it is access independent. Uh, many networks are connect, uh, can be connected to this IMS network, like PSTM, public switch telephone network, PLMM, public LAN mobile network, XDSL, 
uh, various type of DSL digital subscriber line or LAN, even LAN, local area network, Wi Fi access, uh, and also the mobile networks that you can, that you know, 2G, 3G, 4G radio access network. So we have an access uh, layer that uh, you can see here. It shows that it is access independent. Okay. Uh, but one of the most important part here is session control. Uh, this is the most important part in the IMS. And one of the uh, key uh, elements, network elements in the session control is CSCF, called session control function. Uh, as you can see, we have also three type of call session control function. We have P C S C F P, uh, which stands for proxy, uh, which is the first contact point of the IMS network. You can see here. In in all scenarios uh, except these two that I will discuss later, this is the first contact point in the IMS network. So this is proxy. Uh, I C S C F which I stand for integrating, uh, integrate when, uh, come, when we come to integrate, it means that it will query and it will integrate HSS for some queries and for some questions. And uh, S, which stands for serving, uh, as you can see here. And the name uh, tells to you that it is used for serving for giving service to the subscribers, for uh, hosting the subscribers, for serving them. And we have also um, the service layer. For example, if you have a server for instant messaging, push to talk, and uh, also other applications, and also third party ab applications like conference gaming and uh, signaling connection par uh, part. Uh, this also can be, for example, OCS, online charging system, CBS, convergent link system, and so on. And we are here we can see that uh, we have operation support system tools, uh, operation maintenance system, and also uh, CCF, uh, which is charging uh, and control function. Okay. And we have also this HSS, which is the previous, it's not a different HSS, it's the, uh, the same HSS that is used for the network, uh, the same HSS that I uh, describing, that I was, uh, that I described in the previous episodes. And uh, it is uh, that one, it's no difference. And also we see some other network elements like uh, MGCF. MGCF is a media gateway control function. Uh, in many um, networks, mobile network operators, MGCF is a part of CS, CS network. Uh, for example, like a transit or gateway MSC, and uh, it will also uh, play a role in IMS network. And it has two roles, one role in the uh, CS part as a transit or gateway and one role in the uh, IMS network and um, I didn't see any uh, for example uh, ex maybe one operator do this for example uh, dedicate a new uh, dedicated MGCF but as I see uh, the same network element that is used for CS as a gateway or transit can be also used as MGCF and it is uh, normal because uh, the role of MGCF is to work as an interworking function uh, to uh, make a connection between IMS and other networks like PSTN, PLMN as you can see here. So it is ordinary that it is it would be selected from the CS part and also we have AGCF that uh, access gateway control function um, that we will uh, I didn't uh, see a lot uh, many applications from this and I will uh, uh, briefly introduce it later 
and this BGCF, which is breakout gateway control function. Uh, we will have this when you have when you have uh, some MGCFs, and it will select one MGCF based on the loads and also some other uh, rules it had. Rules it had. Okay. So in brief, uh, we can say that IMS is consists of four uh, main part. The first part, as I told to you, is call control. Uh, the most important uh, network element in call control is the CSCF, and also the mo uh, it's, uh, in my opinion, the most important part in IMS is also call control because when the signaling or CP is not there, so we won't we wouldn't have UP. So the first and the most important part is CP and call uh, which call control is part of that so uh, this is call session control function proxy integrating and serving as i told to you but in the real scenarios and in uh, some scenarios that i will uh, discuss later you will uh, you will learn the main application of each node uh, better this is the user management part uh, which has HSS and SLF. SLF is self locator function. It is used when you have uh, lots of subscriber and more than one HSS, for example, two or three HSS, and it will select one of the HSS based on the subscriber uh, location it, that which that is, that belongs to which HSS. And here we have a network interworking function. As I discussed, MGCF media gate and control function. Uh, as uh, discussed, it can be also uh, MSC server uh, from uh, CS part, okay? It can be or not. And IM Media Gateway, it also can be a Media Gateway from CS part, T Media Gateway, or uh, Transit Media Gateway, or Gateway Media Gateway, and also Breakout uh, Gateway Control Function. And and the last one is uh, media resources, which has two elements, media resource function controller and the media resource function processor uh, for handling media uh, activities and media resources in the IMS part. Um, one, of, one very simple example in this uh, part is that uh, if you are two CS subscriber and call each other, the tone here is different, and the, also the announce are different when two IMS uh, subscriber uh, call each other. Okay, and this is because that here a media gateway is uh, is used for handling this announcement and tones, but here. MRFC and MRFP are used so uh, this is another media gateway and uh, definitely the tone and the announcement would be different also maybe the operator uh, use uh, the same announcement but uh, based on the uh, codec the tone would be different okay uh, I think till now it is enough for the introductory part uh, in the next episodes uh, i will go through more details and some basic scenarios about uh, ims uh, hope it would be useful and informative for you and if it was interesting and helpful please don't forget to uh, introduce this channel to your colleagues and friends and feel free to contact me in case of any question uh, thanks for your time and uh, hope see you in the next episode bye